What is up guys, it's your boy Swole, I'm here, back with another Dragonflight gold making video. So today we're talking about AFK gold making strategies in Dragonflight, and using different professions to make gold pretty much semi-AFK. This is perfect if you have, for example, a second account that you want to make some gold with, just standing, crafting stuff, and making gold that way, or if you just want to make some gold while doing daily chores, taking showers, making food, doing literally anything else, you can make some semi-passive gold, just by crafting stuff and doing things while you're not really playing the game. So I want to talk about some semi-AFK gold making strategies in the game itself, and I also want to say that I will be making a lot of Dragonflight gold making videos, some of them will be available to sub subscribers of the channel only, so if you want to make, get access to the best gold making videos and gold making strategies out there, click that subscribe button down below and you'll be notified of every single video and also have access to subscriber only videos. So that is the best way to get uh, the best information from me at least, to just subscribe down below and also if you want to make, get even more access to more gold making info we have a dragonflight gold guide as well this is currently a 155 pdf pages uh, pages pdf document about gold making in dragonflight containing the very best gold farms in dragonflight as well so far on the beta we have found over 40 different dragonflight gold farms some of which will be absolutely insane on day one and the first couple of weeks of the expansion as well and we have a huge update coming for the gold guide just today or tomorrow so there's going to be some huge updates and i'll be updating the guide throughout the entire expansion and once you buy the guide you will get those updates for free you will also get early access to the ultimate gold making strategy in dragonflight which is a video that i've already made and you will have early access to that video by getting that guide right now the video is up right now but it's unlisted so you get access to it by getting the guide Okay, that is pretty much it though, let's talk about the video and how to make some semi-passive gold in Dragonflight. So to do this we're utilizing some professions and I want to give you guys as many different ways to do this as possible. So instead of just listing one or two, I'll, I'm just going to be going through pretty much all of them. So let's start with the professions that I have on this character right here, which is jewel crafting and tailoring. So let's start with tailoring. For tailoring we have several different uh, specializations. Now there's one, actually two of which here that are kind of interesting. So first of all, I've gone through all of these before, but we have tailoring, mastery and garment crafting that are very useful in their own um, use cases, but not for this video itself because they are not really AFKable. Garment crafting and crafting gear, kind of somewhat AFKable, but you're, you're making epics basically through this one, and you also have tailoring mastery which gives you more cloth from lo looting humanoids in the open world. But let's talk about textiles. So from textiles right here, you will see you have a spinning trait. Now from spinning you will learn to occasionally extract rousing elements from certain types of wilder cloth during the unraveling process and you will also save some resources and get extra skill while you're doing unraveling and upon getting the last one you will now learn to guarantee a rousing element from certain types of cloth during the unraveling process. So let's talk about that one for a second and let's just go over here to this vendor I'm playing on the beta right now. So in this case, if you are unraveling decayed wilder cloth, you will now get awakened decay. If you are unraveling frostbitten wilder cloth, you will now get rousing frost. And if you are unraveling singed wilder cloth, you will now get rousing fire. Let's just talk. Uh, let's just grab like a hundred of these, and uh, I can actually do a couple of unravelings right now. If I just go to professions, we go to tailoring. You can see personally, I have all the specs into spinning right here. So if I go into my recipes. And go into Dragon Isles Unraveling, I can now unravel Singed with the Cloth, and if we just unravel all of them, you will now see we get, we get between 1 and 3 Rousing Fires for every single unraveling, and by getting to this specialization as soon as possible, you can get a lot of these Rousing Fires. Now the reason why this is actually a very viable gold making strategy in the expansion itself is that usually a lot of people just grab tailoring to get extra cloth from humanoids and by going into cloth collection they will get a lot more cloth from humanoids. You're getting a brand grand total of 150% additional cloth by having the full spec right here. So based on this there's going to be a lot of cloth being pumped into the market and if you can take advantage of that by having one character specced into unraveling you can now get rouse 
rousing elements from those cloth and uh, sell those rousing elements while also using the spools of winter cloth to craft different types of items and rousing elements will be in high demand in the market itself they are used in crafting epic weapons epic armor and most of all darkman trinkets they are used in abundance for crafting darkman trinkets so uh AFK gold making, gold making strategy number one with tailoring is putting five points into textiles, then learning a sub spec, going all the way into spinning, grabbing 30 points in spinning, so 35 points in total, and then just buying stuff and buying different types of cloth and unraveling. AFK gold making, gold making strategy number two is going into draconic needlework. By going into Draconic Needlework, you will now get plus skill and learn to craft exceptional cloth wear with reagents such as Asia Weave and Chrono Cloth. So let's just take a look at this one, for example. Not really a lot to look at right here. You will just learn how to craft stuff and get some resourcefulness. But upon choosing this one right here, Asia Weave Tailoring. Focus on the arcane nature, uh, gaining plus one skill per point in the specialization when making and using Asia Weave. So the thing to look at here is that you're getting plus one skill skill when crafting Asia Weave, giving you higher quality Asia Weave. So here you learn how to craft Asia Weave Bolt, and for every point you spend here you get plus one skill, giving you higher chances of proccing tier 2 or tier 3 Asia Weave as well. So plus 10 inspiration gives you an additional proc chance to get even higher quality, learning how to craft the mantle, learning a sub spec, 10 resourcefulness, 10 inspiration once again, and learning how to craft different items. Upon the last one right here, master the art of creating Asia Weave Bolts, gaining plus one skill once again, so now you can get even better tier items, so tier 2 and tier 3, and improve your connection with the blue dragonfly, decreasing how quickly you exhaust the magic used to craft the bolts. So if we just go to tailoring super quick here, you can see Asia Weave Bolt, you, I can craft 2 out of 30. When you start, you will have 1 out of 10, and by having the full specialization, you can craft the more of these, and the cooldown will go faster so these are on a cooldown but now you can craft more of them before triggering the cooldown and the cooldown itself will recharge faster so if you just want to create Asia weave bolts and sell those on the auction house like you will see right now they are sellable so if you just want to create those and sell those then set yourself up with an alt army spec into draconic needlework and focus on either Asia weave or chrono cloth and sell those as well so to recap tailoring super quickly afk method number one spinning and doing unraveling afk gold making method number two and draconic needlework and crafting cooldown cloth now, while we're talking about AFK gold making, and I'm doing this on the same character that I have jewel crafting with, let's talk about jewel crafting super quickly. So by specking into prospecting, you will now be able to get a lot more and better stuff from prospecting. And by actually pick picking prospecting, which will require you to have 30 points, so you will need to spend 10 points right here to get yourself to learning a subspec. So 10 points into enterprising, then 25 points into prospecting, you will now get a lot more and a lot better stuff from prospecting. And if you want to sell raw gems for jewel crafters to cut, and you want to make gold with prospecting, this is a necessary actual specialization to have. So in this case, you would have an alt with 35 points spent into enterprising, while probably going for either faceting or setting on your main, just to actually maximize the amount of stuff that you're making with those raw gems that you are now funneling to yourself through your prospecting alt. So having one alt to prospect, send that to another one, just to get more stuff when you're prospecting. And I do think by just having 35 points spent right here, you will get so much more from prospecting that in the first couple of weeks, you can make some actual passive gold, and it's probably going to be very decent gold as well, just sitting in the capital city and prospecting stuff, which is absolutely perfect on a second account where you can just make some, let's say 10k per hour, just by prospecting, on a second account, just by doing nothing, just clicking one button, standing still, and then selling stuff on the auction house, that is pretty decent. Also, if you just, once again, want to take a shower, go make some food, uh, go for a drive, do whatever, you can set yourself in a capital city and craft stuff, and in this case, just prospect things, and make some passive gold while doing pretty much nothing. 
passive slash semi AFK in gold mickey strategy number three requires inscription and in this case you want to go for rune mastery and ideally you want to spend quite a few points here actually and you might want to have two separate alts for this just to unlock the full benefits as soon as possible but basically you can get benefits for both milling and for crafting inks so if you want to have all of this on one character you have to activate two sub specs and you get the first one upon spending 10 points and the second one upon spending 20 points so if you want to have all of this on one character, you will need to spend a total of 60 points. So personally, I will use two different characters here, one for milling, so 10 points here, then 20 points here, and one for inks, which is 10 points here, and 10 points here. So let's talk about that super quickly. Understanding Flora. Improve at milling various herbs in the Dragon Isles, gaining plus one skill per point. So here you can see you will save resources, so plus five resourcefulness. You will also get plus ten multicraft, plus ten resourcefulness, plus twenty multicraft, and upon the end here you will get ten resourcefulness. So in total you're getting twenty-five resourcefulness, saving you materials when you're milling, and you will also get plus thirty multicraft, giving you a chance to proc additional pigments when you're milling. Now. Now that is not as good as the ink part here, so the inks, this one right here, plus one skill once again, plus five inspiration, plus ten multicraft, plus ten inspiration, plus ten multicraft, and the last one, multicraft grants up to 50% extra inks this one could be massive and this is like you're just getting 10 on and 10 so 20 multicraft in total but you can stack this you can use different types of profession tools and get multicraft on those profession tools as well to give yourself a massive multicraft proc chance and now you will also get up to 50 percent extra inks just by crafting inks so gold making strategy right here would just be to buy herbs mill the herbs send the herbs to the character with crafting inks and then craft those inks. And the thing is, even though inks are not used in, for example, let's just scroll down to the Dark Moon cards. So if we go all the way down to, let's just find the Dark Moon cards super quickly. We have Contract, we have Draconic stuff and things. So for the Dark Moon cards right here, you can see you only need Awakened Elementals. There's literally no pigments, no inks needed here. And you can also craft the next Dark Moon cards as well, the Dark Moon deck boxes. These ones will require 10 Riddle Bark and also 12 Cosmic Ink. Now you can also make Draconic Missives, which once again will require ink. You have Missives of Multicraft, this is one that I just talked about. This one will guarantee you to get Multicraft on your Isle uh, Dragon Isles crafting tool recipes so you can get even more multicraft right here right this one requires parchments inks and chilled runes so here's the thing inks will be needed and by having your uh, inscription characters specced into getting more inks you can literally buy herbs mill them and get more inks and sell those inks and i'm going to bet right now that will be profitable exactly how much gold per hour you make by this i'm not really sure but i, I would say you're probably going to make quite a decent chunk if you say 20k per hour just by buying herbs and uh, milling those herbs and crafting those inks and sell them you're going to need to make a lot of semi-passive gold once again perfect on an alt or something like that or you can just sit in the capital city doing basically nothing standing still watching netflix and making gold at the same time now you do have another type of this like through blacksmithing as well where you can now smelt additional alloys and this one basically just gives you some multicraft procs whenever you're smelting alloys but it gives you a lot of multicraft along the way so like right here you will need 10 points spent then 20 points into smelting so in total you will need 30 points spent into specialty smithing as a smithing right here and upon having the full circle here you will see we get plus 20 multicraft plus 10 inspiration plus 20 additional multicraft plus 10 inspiration once again and then multicrafting grants up to 50% extra alloys and other reagents. What I will say here though is that for the two alloys we can smelt and make we have a very low multicraft percentage even with the specialization so we have some multicraft we only have 4% chance to proc that multicraft so once again you will need to further increase your multicraft stat by having for example profession tools with multicraft stat on them. Now if you can get yourself 
to 10-20% multicraft, then we're starting to talk about some real profits from the specialization, but right now, 4%, you're getting one additional alloy on multicraft proccing, so it's not really that big, but I just wanted to talk about it either way, because if you can increase your multicraft stat, this can really be viable. Okay, so so far in the video, we have only really been talking about the uh, actual crafting profession, but at the end here, I wanted to include a gathering profession as well, which is mining, and mining has some very different and unique cases here, where you can actually spec into getting more mines when you're actually out in the open world mining as well, getting plus skill, plus finesse, plus perception, or plus deafness, or you can get more rousing elements while you're gathering in the open world, or you can choose to go the, uh, as, uh, the actual route of metallurgy, I've talked about this in my mining guide video from a couple of weeks ago, but I wanted to include it here as well because this is actually massive. So you can get metallurgy right here, I, I would chosen 40 points here, and you also have 40 points in draconium. Now for this one right here, you will need quite a few points, so for example, you will uh, learn a subspec right here, so you will learn to refine quality 1 draconium to quality 2, but I want to go from quality 2 to quality 3. That being said, 10 points, you can learn the subspecs. So 50 points in total is what you need to refine from quality 1 to quality 2, but if you want to go from quality 2 to quality 3, you will need to go all the way down here, right, to learn how to uh, refine, so for draconium, quality 1 to quality 2, at the end you will learn how to refine Cassegorite as well, so it depends on which type of ore you actually want to learn how to refine, but let's just talk about draconium first of all, so by going 10 points, you will learn how to refine quality 1 to quality 2, by going down here, you will now learn how to refine from quality 2 to quality 3. So if you just want to focus on draconium, you will need 10 points spent in metallurgy, then 40 points spent into draconium. So in total, you will need 50 points spent into mining. And what I want to show you here is that you will get some plus skill, plus deftness, plus skill, finesse, and learning how to refine, right? So you get a lot of like mini stuff along the way. But upon having 40 points, you will now have a chance to find rousing essence while refining draconium and for the purpose of this I have now bought 500 tier 2 draconium ores that I want to refine into tier 3 and show you guys how much stuff you get while you're refining. This is going to take a little while but I just want to see that we can proc some stuff here. So we're refining 5 quality 2 into 1 quality 3. So if that's worth it on your auction house you will have to wait and see on the actual live version of the game but let's just say 1 tier 3 3 draconium ore is selling for more than 5 tier 2 for you. In that case, you're already making profit just by refining, and while by having what we currently have, which is the full specialization here, we can find some additional actual reagents while we're refining, giving us just some extra semi-passive gold over time, just for already refining. So instead of refining with literally no specialization spent, we can now start getting more stuff while we are actually refining. So I'm just going to finish the entire refining process here and I'm gonna cut the video here and get back to you just so we don't have to watch the entire 75 crafts but yeah let's see how many we get from 100 refining crafts so upon completing 500 refining craft, we have now refined 500 tier 2 draconium into 100 tier 3 draconium, and along the way we also found 3 rousing fire and 3 rousing earth. So it's not like you are going to be making a lot of gold by doing this, but if you're already mining in the open world, then let's just say 1 tier 3 is selling for the same or more as 5 tier 2s, you will already be making gold or at least selling things faster, and by going into the rounds of metallic you are now getting some additional materials while doing that process. So while you're not making a massive amount of gold, this did not take too much time. It took me about 5 minutes to craft those. So if we just multiply this by 12 right here, we should be getting about 3 to 4 awakened fire and awakened earth every single hour just by doing this, which is once again not going to be making you massive amounts of gold, but it's something just semi-passive to do to make some gold on the side if refining is already profitable for you. 
Now, it is also worth noting that we did this with no multi-craft and no resourcefulness. So by having, for example, resourcefulness right here, we would save ourselves resources while refining. And by having multi-craft, we would proc additional stuff as well. Either way, th those are some semi-passive and semi-AFKable gold making strategies in Dragonflight itself. I think this expansion has a lot of potential for gold making, and it's probably going to be one of the best uh, expansions ever for gold making. Either way, I hope you are as excited for the launch as I am. We are only just like a day away now, so this is going to be absolutely fantastic. I'll be streaming the entire launch myself over on twitch.tv slash solheimyt. The link is down below in the video description, and we're also included in the support a streamer campaign, so if you want to come and get your rewards, then follow me on Twitch and get your rewards. Either way, I hope you enjoyed the video, let me know which professions you're going to use for gold making in Dragonflight in the comment section down below. Once again, subscribe for more Dragonflight videos, where we'll be pumping out daily videos throughout the expansion itself, and at least for the first month. So yeah, lots of gold making, lots of videos. Hopefully you're, in, you're going to be enjoying the expansion, hopefully you're looking forward to it. Either way, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you again very soon.